Hey, what's going on guys? This is Nate from Game Monkey, and welcome to my walkthrough of Dishonored Definitive Edition on the PlayStation 4. In this guide, I'll be showing you how to earn all the following trophies in one single playthrough. The trophies that I'll be covering are Clean Hands, so that's no kills during the entire playthrough, Ghost, which is never being detected by anybody, Shadow, which is never being detected by anybody except the main targets, which I'm going to be treating the same way as Ghost, Mostly Flesh and Steel, that's using no supernatural powers besides the blink ability, which you I will not be upgrading at all. And just dark enough, completing the game in low chaos. So here in chapter 6, this is called the Flooded District. Right off the bat, you'll see me go down. If we go up the stairs instead of down the stairs, there's going to be two assassins up there that are incredibly difficult to get around. So I found a neat little way down here to get through. Mind the fish, but you can actually blink through this hole and get directly out of the out of that little area. So unless you actually try to go up top, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about with the assassins, but they are it's possible to get around them, but it's extremely difficult, so and a lot of luck's involved. So I find it easier just to go down through the water, come over here, and you'll be good to go. So, with the this portion of the story, we've been betrayed. They gave us to Dowd, the leader of the assassins, the guy that killed the empress, and he was keeping us prisoners. So we managed to escape him, and we have a lot of different things we can do here. So one of the objectives, I guess it's optional, but you can actually go and get your gear, your gear back, crossbow, stuff like that. I don't really use the gear, so I d just avoided that objective completely and went right to the, the main portion of the objectives. I didn't see any sense in, in picking up the gear that I don't use, so I will just use this assassin sword to, to carry. I actually tried to play through once without even taking a sword, but it just doesn't look the same. I like having the sword. So I'm doing a save right there. This mission, there's so much editing on this mission. It's by far my least favorite mission of the game. And what's what's kind of funny about that is it doesn't tell you a lot of things. So, for example, if we don't go up the building on the left-hand side here, we're going to get all the way down there where the arrow is telling us to go. And it's going to say, oh, well, you need this key. Well, the key's up here. So as long as you follow this and go get the key first, you'll be fine once you get down there. Because getting down there... It isn't too bad, but it's not the easiest thing in the world. So, just pay attention to which direction these assassins are looking. Work your way around and you'll be fine. Kind of lucky right there. He could have spotted me, but didn't for whatever reason. I go ahead and just take him out. I suppose I probably could have got that key from him. But the last time I did this, when I found out I didn't need the key I actually avoided the assassins and didn't even take him out so I'm not sure if that'll work or not you can test it for yourself but uh that's the the first section there not too bad but the difficulty will ramp up significantly here later on this portion here especially I probably did a good 45 minutes of trial and error so if you do exactly what I do right here and you have a little bit of luck, you'll be fine. So immediately drop down in the water. And then once you get up here, you'll kind of want to look up and see where that assassin is. You don't want to get too far out there or he will see you. So what you want to do is blink across here. I actually fell in the water, but I'm trying to get to this little area here and get up on this concrete or mortar bridge. Now there's going to be some dogs. Sometimes they're down the alley farther, sometimes they're right here in front of me. It it just kind of seems random. There's also two assassins behind us, so we have to go through here fairly quickly. There you can see the dogs. They're actually going to lay down and sleep. Even though they're sleeping, they can still uh, sense you if you're there too long with them. So hop up on that chimney. There will be an assassin to our right-hand side. We can avoid him completely. It kind of all depends on what way he's facing too so just be really cautious here he'll be walking either towards us or away from us at this point and then I just jet right in the window it looks really easy guys but I'm telling you that part is a nightmare 
it's going to get a little bit easier here. Just use the bookshelves and stuff like that to get elevation. They won't actually notice you. You can avoid both these guys. I chose to take one of them out in the doorway because I just didn't want to want to deal with them. This is where the mission starts getting actually fun instead of uh, trialsome, in my opinion. I really like how this section is. And he'll just kind of chill in the doorway, lean on one side, then lean on the other side. So I just got <laughs> choked him out, got him out of the way, so we didn't have to worry about it. Just hide him from the, the other one there. You can take both of them out. There's some goodies back there. This part's really, really easy. Just got to be patient. So there's an assassin training another one, showing him how to blink and stuff like that. So I just kind of work my way around. I'm trying to get up on that bookshelf, but it just I can't get that far with just the one blink. So I'll hop over here and leapfrog onto this one. And if you're fast enough, I you could make it. Like I could have made it right there through that window. But I chose to play on the side of caution and actually just wait for them to finish what they're doing. Take one of them out. The other one will actually walk away. The trainer will walk away. And then you can just take the one out so you don't have to worry about him seeing you when you're on the other side of that window. It's actually kind of a cool cool little section here. I really enjoyed the assassin's base. I just didn't like the beginning part with the water. Um, especially with the water, kind of talking about that, is you'd think you could be all stealthy and go through the water and avoid people and things of that nature. But those fish, man, they'll just tear you up. So I just stay out of the water as much as possible. Plus the climbing mechanic for when you're ready to get out of the water is incredibly finicky so I just don't really do much with it and this guy will move eventually I probably let's see yeah I'm gonna rob him take him out I know he walks over in that dark area eventually but got a little impatient there I'll just throw him in the dark and then we'll go through, the, through this window here and you have to be really careful up above the vent where we're going in that window or where I'm taking us in that window, there's actually going to be an assassin right off the, the bat. So you have to peek around, make sure he's not facing your direction. And then it's fairly straightforward from that point. So he's in there, leaning against the bookshelf. There's a couple potions down there. Can't remember if I take him out or not. I, I played through this so many times, guys, it's ridiculous. There we go. So pretty much he's just blocking our way right now. You never know which way they're going to be looking. That's kind of, it's, it's fun for the challenge and annoying at the same time. Almost screwed up there. It wasn't close enough when I tried to choke him. So I just go ahead and take him out, hide the body. And then we'll get to the most challenging portion of this mission, I think. It's just it's just so tricky. You have to have more patience than me. There's a lot of different ways to go about this. But essentially what we want to do is steal a key that's hanging on Dowd's desk. I'm not going to choke him out. Not going to mess with him at all. But to get to the next area, we have to have this key. So I'll show you how I did it. I don't know if it's right or wrong or what, but uh, there's you have to just get around him. And this other assassin is just a pain. And choking one or the other out to kind of narrow down the, the enemies does not seem to work very well. They always seem to catch you. So what I do, instead of going all the way up top, I just work my way around on these bookshelves. If I would have retrieved my gear, of course, I could have just sleep darted both of them and been fine. But this way works pretty good. When you get over this far, Dowd will do one of two things. He'll either start reading the book that he's doing right now, 
or he will smoke a cigar. So either way, that key is right in front of him. So there's no way we can get in there. My goal is to zip in there with my blink and get out before he actually sees me. So a lot of things have to line up. Both of them have to be facing the other direction. And it just takes forever to get get these things to line up. So just pay attention to both of them. I think he paths back, paths over to the right and then back. And then when he goes back to the right, I believe is when we actually have an opportunity. That's when they're both going to be facing the other way. Yep. So he'll go back to the left and then to the right one more time. And that's when they'll both be going on the right direction. There we go. So blink down there. You have to be really, really quick. And back. So looks easy. Took me forever. And then we still have to get out of this place. So our exit, or one of our exits, is right behind this assassin. Not Dowd, but the other one. There's a window right behind him. And he will see you if you don't get around far enough. There's a cigar. And then there's two assassins directly in front of us. I've been able to get through this section a few different ways. I honestly haven't decided which is the best method but in this recording run it just worked best sometimes he's facing you and you're not going to be able to get behind him like that so I just took him out right there then there'll be another assassin right in front of us so a little bit of luck through here so I just want to get right behind him choke him out and then get into this building It's going to be kind of a longer video, so stick with me. It's a little over 20 minutes. And like I mentioned, I mean, I'm going through here as directly as possible. I'm just trying to get in, get out, not even doing most of the side objectives, things like that. So there is a lot of content in this, in this specific mission. This part can be kind of tricky. I choose to go right down the chain. Sometimes they'll see you, sometimes they won't. There's a lot of things to, to explore in this building as well. I just go all the way down to the bottom and get to the next, next portion. So, honestly, we're through the most difficult sections. But it still is kind of frustrating here in this next area. And this next area is what I actually dislike and makes me dislike this this mission. I love the assassin part, I think it's awesome. But this this freaking part is miserable. So we have to go through these tunnels and get through a bunch of tall boys. There's tons of tall boys in this area that we're that we're gonna be coming up on here in a second. And it's just a it's just a freaking nightmare. So I found a couple of different ways to, to get through here. If I can take me a second, I lost my bearings for a minute. Um, but once we get up here, it'll make sense. There's a big train track going across, which we can't get on because it's electrified. I'm still a little lost from the, the look of it, but the train goes and dumps bodies and, and things like that. So what we want to do is pretty much get through where the train is. There's a little access tunnel in that area. But to do so, we have to cross this huge area of tall boys, guards, and that kind of thing. I've been able to actually jump and blink onto the train to get across. That's one way to do it. This guy, he's a jerk. He'll punch you if you get too close to him. Just to side note there. So across this little area is where we're going. So I work my way along the left-hand side. There's a bunch of old buildings, crumbling buildings. I just use them to kind of block my view of the tall boys. And they are really, really keen to alerting if you're, you're around. So I'll just use this lamp, hop up here. There's going to be two guards coming underneath us here in just a second. I think I beat them. Here comes one. So I'm just kind of thinking in my head what what a good way of doing this is. 
there goes the train that we can actually use to get back the other direction but i don't really like doing those kind of jumps i i like finding as much of a direct path as possible that's just me it'd probably be a lot faster to use the train but i'm going to use these these crazy war-torn looking buildings and it's pretty it's not too bad the only frustrating thing is how I don't want to say how alert the AI is here, but it some of the times that it actually sees you are pretty ridiculous. So using elevation in these buildings to block us, we're pretty good until we get all the way across. This is certainly the hardest part. So we have to get up there and pull out that whale oil canister. And because our blink isn't upgraded, this section is a lot harder than it needs to be. If we had the blink upgraded, it'd be a piece of cake. But you can see, I can't quite reach. And I'm just hoping these guys do not see me. So I fall down, actually. I almost get caught. If you stand on that pylon, that building corner for too long, you'll get seen as well, just so you know. So you can work your way out here to the edge as long as he is not looking your direction. And you can barely make it. So unplug that. These tracks will still electro electrocute you. So as you can see, I found out right there. So I just go down here and then we're actually entering. I believe it's some sewers or something. Kind of a nasty area. There's going to be some weepers. We don't have to deal with them. If you're quiet, you don't have to deal with them, I should say. I'll show you what I mean here as soon as we get there. Yeah, so we're going in the sewer. And if you do not crouch through this entire section and do things... I, It's, it's kind of hard to explain because I've been screwed over. And doing the exact same thing, I haven't been. So I don't know what the best way to do it. So if you go straight ahead instead of going left there, you can break some boards and go down in an area. And sometimes the weepers will find you and sometimes they won't. There's not very many weepers in the game because of the low chaos that I'm playing on. There's a bone charm that I, I've never used. Um, but I just work my way up through here. And there's going to be a kind of a hole in the ground with a, a gear we have to turn to, to let us in. And that's where the weepers will actually grab you. So they're pretty much on the other side of these walls. We're getting right next to them. But believe me, guys, you don't want them to, to hear you. You'll be screwed. So I think it has something to do with breaking the boards. They're more apt to hear you if you actually break them. I stand right on it so that just in case they're coming that it just drops me down as fast as possible and in this section it's it's pretty much straight straight ahead from from here on out it's it's really easy um, but I'm kinda just being cautious at this point but all we have to do is go through this door go through another little area where there's some not friendly enemies but neutral neutral people it's friendly enemies that doesn't make any sense but uh anyway yeah there's a, a neutral area we can just run through like before you don't want to get too close to people because they will push and punch and stuff like that so keep your distance but you don't have to worry about them alerting or anything like that and what you what is shooting at me at the moment if you can hear that is there's these plants and if they see you, they shoot stuff at you. They do not trigger any alerts. I'm not sure if you can kill them without ruining the clean hands. I, I don't know. I chose not to. But they actually get me pretty good here in a minute and mess me up. So I'm just going to break these out. And we'll go on to the end. This one right here is the one that really jacked me up. If I had my blink upgraded, I could get all the way up there on that pipe. But from where I am on the corner, there's just no way it'll reach. 
But instead, I mean, you can break those boards or you're going to get wrecked. So I actually chose to go a little bit closer and then get on that pipe, but he still saw me. Obviously, because I wasn't peeking anymore. But if you do have your blink upgraded, you'd be able to get right up there and he probably wouldn't even see you. But And instead of dropping down immediately here, I got kind of stuck and he just really screwed me up. So, And then this doorway will take you back to the hound's pit, hound pits where we're going to go get our retribution. So I will see you in the next chapter.